Hey there friends, I'm Melanie and you're watching AKA Mommy and today's video is going to be part three in a Q&A that I've been doing recently here on my channel and I'm going to really try hard to finish all of the questions. Um, I'm trying to keep these videos somewhat short and not super long so I'm going to go ahead and get started so that I can answer as many as possible. Okay, so the first question is from Megan, and she says that she wants to know about more about Tapestry of Grace curriculum and how it worked out for us. And I am going to do actually a dedicated video on that, Megan. So I didn't want you to think that I completely skipped over your question, but stay tuned. A video on that will be coming up very soon here on my channel if it has not already been posted. Okay, so Kiera <clears throat> wants to know where do you find meal ideas? Um, she, she got a crock pot and she's trying to come up with some good meal ideas. Honestly, Pinterest, go to Pinterest and type in crock pot recipes and you will just be flooded with ideas that if I just feel like I'm in a rut and I don't know what to cook, I always go to Pinterest. It is my number one source of inspiration for meals. Okay, so the next couple of questions are homeschool related. So Jamie wants to know, are your children wanting to attend college? If so, how do you help? How do you plan to help them transition from homeschool to college? Um, how does the whole high school transcript and credits thing work when a homeschooler wants to go to college? Okay, so this is actually a really um, good question because there are a lot of people who don't understand how this works. I know that my oldest daughter wants to go to college. My her younger sister, I'm not 100% sure yet. I don't. She's not 100% sure yet. And then our two youngest ones, I can only assume that they will want to because it's not something that we've discussed. Um, but basically, how it works is. First of all, we are in a homeschool co-op, and so my kids do. Um, get to experience what it's like to go to a class, um, be in a classroom setting with other students and have another teacher. Um, you, they have assignments that they turn in and they, um, are, they take tests and they are actually graded. And so they very much get to experience the, you know, school setting in that way. Yes, college is going to be significantly different than that for them, but I feel like it kind of helps with the transition a little bit. Um, the high school transcript, the state that I live in, basically the parent just gets to determine what you give your child credit for. So if your child has taken, um, physical science, biology, and chemistry, you give your child the credit for those. And then you can pretty much print out a transcript for your child showing what they've completed for high school. Um, our children obviously will still take the SAT or the ACT test, which will give them test scores, you know, to show to a college that they want, that they might want to attend. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It's really not as um, shady as some people think that it is. There are techniques or not techniques. There are um, ways that you go about getting this accomplished and there are homeschooled kids being accepted into colleges all around the country every single semester. Actually, there are more homeschool kids being accepted into colleges than ever before because there are more kids nowadays being homeschooled than there ever have been in the past. It's definitely a growing movement and colleges acknowledge that. Um, colleges actually enjoy uh, seeing applications from homeschool kids because now granted this is a this is not by any means to cover everyone but homeschool kids tend to be um a little bit more outside the box thinkers and so they're really uh interested in seeing homeschool kids apply to their college so it definitely is not hard for a kid to get into college just because they were homeschooled versus public schooled um but that's a great question because that's that's one i get all the time actually so the next question is, um, Andrea, Andrea, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Have your older girls ever wanted to go to school since being homeschooled? Um, the answer is yes, they did. So we homeschooled for four years and then my oldest for sure was like, mom, I really think I want to go back to public school. And her younger sister kind of jumped on that bandwagon was like, yeah, I guess I could go back to public school. Um, but I was not convinced that that's where they needed to be. I really still felt like 
um, God was placing on my heart that they needed to be homeschooled. And to be fair, the reason that my kids wanted to go back to public school versus staying at home was purely for social reasons, which I totally get. I mean, the social aspect of it was probably my favorite part of high school. Um, so I get it completely. So the first four years that we homeschooled, we just homeschooled at home. We were not a part of a co-op. The fifth year that we homeschooled, however, was our first year at the co-op. And that actually is what completely made the difference for my two oldest girls. Because like I said, now they were going to classes with their peers. They were getting a chance to socialize and make friends. Um, as a part of this co-op, we actually have the ability to put our kids in sports. Um, there are some sports that are offered, but not like every sport. And um, like my, my girls will also have the opportunity to go to prom. And so they're not completely missing out on all of the high school um, experiences. And they really like that a lot. The the co-op basically bridged the gap for us between my kids feeling like they will they were social hermits and then putting my kids in a public school. We were able to remain homeschoolers but still let my kids have that social experience that they were craving, which I totally get and I don't have a problem with. Um, but they're really happy now to be homeschooled and so I was glad that it worked out. Um, so there's that. Um, Kay lives in the UK. And so she's thinking about homeschooling her son and she wanted some advice on that. Okay, probably what I'll do is respond to you um, in a comment because I think that your, your uh, question needs a little bit more specific answer. So I'm going to do that. And I think that that is everything for the Facebook questions. Um, so let me finish up really quickly. Ashley asked, I just lost my page, you guys. I'm, I'm ridiculous sometimes. Okay, so Ashley Valdez wanted to know how I balance, um, let me find the question again. Where'd it go? Okay, how do you manage your schedule with homeschooling, housework, and everything else? And how do you and your husband find time to spend together? So the, the really simple answer to this is one that was kind of hard for me to to uh, accept, but it's the truth. How I find time to manage homeschooling, housework, and every and a YouTube channel, and working out, and everything else that I do is I got off my computer. That's what I did, and it was a little bit of an eye-opener for me, but I realized that I was just spending way too much time on my computer, whether it be on Pinterest or Facebook, Instagram. Um, YouTube was a big one. I would watch a lot of YouTube channels. Um, but really and truthfully, I had to take a hard look at my priorities and my goals and realize that by sitting at my computer, just basically wasting my time, um, I wasn't reaching any of those goals. So while I still do watch YouTube, I still do get on Facebook. I still do browse through Pinterest. I have limited myself to a very short amount of time to do those um, on a daily basis, and I don't do them at all on Sunday. Um, on Sunday evening, I will usually get on my computer and just check and make sure that there's nothing that needs my attention. Um, but that honestly is, it opened up way more time in my day than I expected it to. Um, and I just had to sit down and really figure out what my priorities were. And I, I just came to realize that I was wasting a lot of time. So once I stopped doing that, I was really able to focus on the things that, um, basically my job, you know, my housework, my homeschooling, um, my YouTube and all of that. And so that's the short answer. It's hopefully not one that's going to upset anyone, but that is the truth. Um, Let's see, what else? Do Our Country Life 28 says, do you have any recipes you love for homemade cleaning products? Um, I'm really considering one of the essential oil diffusers. Are they easy to use and clean up? Okay, so homemade cleaning products, not really so much because the primary ingredients that you use in homemade cleaning um, you know, products would include vinegar or bleach um, and baking soda. I don't have a problem with baking soda. I despise the smell of vinegar and bleach. Um, so if I were going to make cleaning products at home, I would probably actually purchase the Thieves Essential Oil um, from Young Living and just it comes in a concentrated form and I would make my own cleaning 
uh, solution from that because it smells really nice. Um, you can definitely use essential oils to help dilute um, or mask the smell of vinegar and stuff, but I promise you guys, I can still smell the vinegar. I don't care how much lavender or anything else I put in it, and I can't stand vinegar. So, um, essential oil diffusers. Yes, they are very easy to use and very easy to clean up. Um, at least all the ones that I have are very, very easy, and they're totally worth, um, looking into. There are a lot of them on Amazon. Just there are so many diffusers on Amazon. You can get some really, really expensive ones and you can get some for like $20. And the $20 ones work just fine in my opinion. I probably have two of them here in my house and then I have a couple of the more expensive ones. They all work the same and they're all pretty easy to clean up. So I would highly recommend um, looking into them. So what else? Let's see. Did I finish the fast metabolism diet? Yes, I did, and I posted a video on my final results and thoughts, um, so make sure that you go and check out that. That was um, Ronalyn. I hope that I spelled that I hope that I said that right, and, and I'm scrolling to see if I've missed any. Um, let's see. Mom of five boys, I loved your KonMari series. Will you continue with those videos? Yes. In fact, I've had um, a few of them come up on my channel recently. I'm trying to get back to posting one a week for you guys, but it might be one every two weeks. So, and then lastly, Ashley from Grace and Grit says, why'd you start a YouTube channel? And what's the coolest thing that's happened because of YouTube? So I started a YouTube channel, um, quite honestly, because I needed a hobby. I needed something to do. And I, um, really felt like I wanted to share my thoughts with other moms. Um, I felt like I had a message to share and I felt like I wanted to be an encouragement to other moms because I was in a season of my life where I really needed encouragement. And for whatever reason, I ended up on YouTube and I came across a, a few channels that I really, really enjoyed watching. And I thought, you know, I could do this. And I started my channel initially thinking that I would be a vlogger and share like day in the life vlogs every day, but I soon realized that that really wasn't my forte. Um, but that's why I started to not only share our lives, but also to um, capture the memories. And that's still to this day why I share day in the life vlogs with you guys. They are not by any means my most popular videos here on my channel, but they are definitely some that. I enjoy going back and watching and my kids love to sit down and watch our day in the life vlogs. So that's definitely um, the main reasons that I started my channel. I just wanted to share. I wanted to share encouragement. I wanted to be able to um, just share with people. I know that sounds pretty simple, but it really is the reason. And probably, no, hands down, the coolest thing that has happened um, for me because of YouTube has been all of the amazing other moms that I have met. Now, again, I haven't actually met these moms in person, um, but I got to be honest with you, it really doesn't even matter to me. I genuinely, some of my closest friends are other YouTube moms. And I do have close friends in my real life, but I have a lot of really close friends that I have gained through YouTube. And I think that that's just, that's just amazing. Um, you know, I not only have gained friendships, but Ashley, who actually asked this question, has helped me to get back on my fitness journey. And I don't want to get emotional when I talk about this, but Ashley was the person or the YouTube channel that helped me to realize that I could pursue a dream that I had had and had kept really secret um, for a long time, and that was to be a personal trainer. I had convinced myself that I was a homeschooling mom and I had a YouTube channel. I didn't have the time. Um, I wasn't qualified. I wasn't, no one would ever take me seriously um, as a personal trainer, but health and fitness and just learning about you know, the biomechanics of how the human body works is so incredibly fascinating to me. And I know a lot of people are going to go, what? <laughs> but it really is. It's so fascinating to me. So when I realized that this was something that I truly found passion in, and I have a passion for encouraging other women, it kind of just made sense that I would pursue, you know, being a personal trainer. But I really didn't know if that was possible for me. I thought that 
you know, in order to be a successful personal trainer or to really um, be an encouragement or an inspiration to people, you had to fit a certain mold. And I wasn't, I'm not that mold. I'm not in my early 20s. I do have kids, you know, the fitness, um, the fitness people that you see on YouTube generally don't look like me. Um, and they don't generally look like Ashley as far as they don't have four kids and they don't, you know, have, they're not, they're just not you know, regular moms. And I know that there are fitness moms on YouTube, but Ashley is the first one that I came across. And so probably one of the most amazing things that has happened because of my YouTube channel is ha meeting another mom that has helped me to accept that my dream could be a, a reality. And so that's been amazing. And so that's definitely a route that I've been pursuing and I'm really excited about that. So I believe that that is all of the questions that were answered. And I very much appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of this video. This is by far the longest Q and A that I've posted in this series, but I wanted to go ahead and just finish this up. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch all of my videos. It just means so much to me to have you support my channel. Um, if you are not a subscriber here on my channel, I do post mommy related videos as well as health and fitness videos. So if you would like to see more content from me, make sure you subscribe before you go. If you missed my most recent video, it will pop up on the screen for you guys right over here. So you can check that out also before you get off that computer. And until next time, you guys, I hope that you're all doing very well and that you're very blessed. Take care. Bye-bye.